Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to show how to create a surface similar to the one used in the previous tutorial, since some of you asked about it. I'm going to create a subdivision surface first, which is available in Rhino 7, then convert it to the NURB surface in order to apply common surface operations in Grasshopper. So this tutorial can be considered a sort of prequel to the previous video, Make sure to watch them both and let's get started. I begin with a closed planar curve which has a few control points. If your control points are too tiny in the viewport display options, you can adjust the control point preview to your liking. Now select the curve and type in the command rebuild. When the dialog box opens, we also see another set of points. In my case, these are solid black. These points will define the topology of our surface. We can change their count and let's also make this curve subd friendly, meaning we will be able to make a subdivision surface from it. I'm going to remove some points and rebuild this curve again, reducing the number of the edit points. Looks better now, let's move forward. In the main menu bar you'll find tools for subdivision surfaces structured similarly to the NURBS tools. Subdivision surfaces offer accurate continuous descriptions of curved geometry, so they are best suited for modeling complex organic shapes. For more information, please check the links in the description. I'm going to create a subd surface by extruding a curve straight, typing in the distance 20. In my case, these are 20 millimeters, and we get a subd surface. Now let's select the upper boundary loop. Then go back to the subd tools and choose to insert an edge. As you see, I'm inserting a whole loop of edges here. Disable the snapping if you need to and pick a spot for insertion. Next, select the boundary loop again and this time scale it using the gumball handles. Then select and scale the inserted loop as well. And then make some additional adjustments if you'd like. So now we have the initial subdivision surface. We can then turn on the edit point preview and model the geometry further using the edit points for instance. But let's say I'd like to make sure that these edge loops are planar again. Let's go to the wireframe preview first, then set a new C plane, which is parallel to the default world top plane, but has a different Z coordinate. So set the plane, make sure it's an active plane, then select the edit points in the loop, project them to the new plane and delete the input objects. And let's do the same with the second loop. Select the points, set the plane, project points to the C plane and then delete the original object. Looks correct? Let's move forward. In the subdivision surface toolbar tab, we have an option to convert subd objects to NURBS. Let's click it and then focus our attention on the command line. It says here that we have selected one object but 20 surfaces will be created. However, in the second line it says that these surfaces will be packed into one larger structure. In the help window on your right you have the explanation regarding the subdivision surfaces face packing. In the active command line we can choose to delete input objects or change subdivision options. This is beyond the scope of this tutorial, so let's leave the default settings, click enter and see what we get. So now we have two overlapping objects. I'm going to select the NURB surface and move it aside, then change the display options to show surface seams, ISO curves and color back faces. And we're done. We can change the problematic seam position if we want, and we can use this surface with typical surface operations. But let's say we'd like to reference this subd object to Grasshopper, keeping its modeling flexibilities. So in Rhino, we have a command that converts subd object to NURBS. However, at the time of this recording, we don't have an analogous tool in Grasshopper. Of course, as always, you most likely would be able to find some add-on tools to help you with that. But let's see what we could do with the innate components in the current situation. So remember, in Grasshopper we have automatic default data conversions possible 
and here we can directly convert a sub D object into a brep. But unfortunately, at the moment, we cannot automatically convert a sub D object into a surface. So let's go back a bit and create our own sub D conversion tool using the Python script component. Let's start with naming the input, setting the type hint as sub D, naming the output as well, inputting our object, and then double clicking to get inside the script editor. So start by importing the Rhino namespace and then define the output. So the output B is the sub D input with the applied to brep function. We can also look at the help tab to investigate this operation. There are two inputs required, self, that is the sub D object, and the sub D to brep options. So we need to assign the options. Let's type in rhino.geometry.subd to rep options dot and here we have three default options. In the help tab it says that currently the basic default option returns unpacked faces. But as you recall from the conversion we did in Rhino, we need faces packed. So let's select default packed option and print the result to check. All seems fine. Let's connect the panels to read the output and have a look at the geometry preview in Rhino. So we have successfully converted a sub D object into a single NURB surface in Grasshopper with a single line of code. Great. I'm gonna turn off the out output and reparameterize the surface. Now let's go through the definitions from the previous tutorial to check if all works as expected. So first we have the UV swap. All looks good here. Let's move on to changing the seam. All looks fine here as well. But uh, let's introduce a crease and see how that would go. Let's adjust the seam. And you can see that the continuity is maintained even with the crease. So be aware of the corner pieces when subdividing such surfaces. OK, let's go back, remove the crease and check the offset solid script. All looks good here as well. So ordinarily, the default back option should work well if the sub D structure allows it. But you might run into some issues when modifying the subdivision surface, say adding creases or deleting faces. So notice, after I had added the creases, the default packed option did not produce one surface. What I get here is a poly surface, but this brep has only three faces, meaning that some packing did occur. To preview how the default packed option would convert sub D to NURBS, let's use the color by face pack option. Select the sub D and click enter. We can now see three distinctive packs divided by three creases, which makes sense. Let's select the creases again and remove them. Now we have no creases, yet the three packs remain. This could be useful in some instances, but if you'd like to reset face packing, you can use the Pack Sub D Faces tool. So we get a single untrimmed surface from this Sub D again. Now, adding only one crease might not affect the face packs, but having more will definitely do so. If by the time you're watching this, the face pack command is not yet available in Grasshopper, then you need to make some other changes to your definition. One other way to restore the default face packing is to recreate a sub D object from its original control polygon. So, first we would need to create a control mesh then recreate a sub D object from this mesh. You can try using these two grasshopper components or you can do the same inside the Python script editor. And in this instance, you can also output more than one face pack. To turn off color by face pack preview, Select the objects and use the command remove per face colors. And don't forget that you can save the script component as a grasshopper user object for later use and sharing with others. 
So this is it for this tutorial. Let us know if you have enjoyed it and if so, share it with others in need. I'll see you in the next video.